At RGF, we have our own laboratory and do some of our own microbiological testing. But the problem with that is that when you do your own testing, nobody believes your results. So all of the testing I'm about to share with you has been done by independent laboratories. One of our great laboratory partners is Kansas State University, the premier microbiological testing center in North America. And they helped us perform the test that I feel best illustrates the active purification concept of these PHI and REMI devices. So our president, Ron Fink, met with a group of advisors from Sandia National Labs, where their microbiological testing for homeland security is done, and Dr. Marsden, representing Kansas State University's Food Sciences Institute, their microbiological testing. They were concerned about a potential release of a virus in an aerosolized form in an airport, for instance. Everyone would be exposed and carry the virus to their next destination, spreading it the whole way. In weeks, you could have a worldwide pandemic. So they were asking us how best to kill germs in the air handler. And Ron brought up the point that it wouldn't matter if you could kill germs in the air handler. Once the sneeze is introduced, the potential microbes would come into contact with everyone in the space before the microbes could even get to the air handler. So a more active purification process was necessary, which is exactly what the PHI and REMI models are designed to do. We had been doing testing in our own bio chamber with a manual sneeze machine and Sandia Labs asked us to step it up to the next level and build a machine that can exactly simulate a human sneeze. A sneeze is one lung worth of air capacity with one gram of fluid and a known number of microbes. We of course built our own sneeze machine pictured here and had it tested by Sandia Labs and Kansas State University. You would put the sneeze machine in a controlled chamber. You would fill the air with the same level of oxidizers that you would get in a typical residential type application and fire the sneeze machine at a plate three feet away. We would count how many microbes made it to this collection plate three feet away along with the REMI system installed at typical residential saturation levels we achieved 88 percent reduction of microbes before they could make it the three feet to the collection plate. When you compare that to let's say the greatest UV light system in the world you have to hope with the UV light system that when I sneeze the germs travel away from you up towards the return air where they're picked up, recirculated through the air handler, are dwelling long enough by that UV light to sterilize them before being blown at into the condition space and that's the air you breathe. What the RGF, PHI, and Remy models are doing is providing a barrier of active purification, beginning to work on air quality pollutants as soon as they're introduced into the condition space, not requiring them to go up to the unit to be purified. Again, this active process is what sets apart our PHI and REMI units from all of the other passive kinds of air purification technology out there. Now let's transition into some other specific testing results on certain kinds of microbes. The first test result we'll touch on, H1N1 flu virus, is the most relevant to our day-to-day -day lives right now. We always start by making sure you understand that RGF, PHI, and REMI technology are not medical devices and are not approved by the FDA or intended to diagnose mitigate, prevent, treat, or cure the H1N1 flu virus. What we did for this test was submit our units to Kansas State University so that they could test how effective our units were at inactivating H1N1 on inoculated stainless steel surfaces. This was the first in a battery of tests that we'll do in order to submit to the FDA to have the FDA approval for the swine flu test that we have seen. There are two lines showing on this grid. One the teal line is the control sample, so in a biochamber that had no RGF products and no H2O2 molecules in the air, the level of H1N1 stayed essentially stable for a 24-hour period. In comparison, the red line was H1N1 on a surface in a chamber that had the H2O2 oxidizers that our unit creates at regular residential levels in the chamber. You can clearly see the reduction on the red line was great. Within six hours, 99 plus percent of the virus was inactivated and was below detectable levels. We were very satisfied by these test results and more detailed copies of a press release with an excerpt of Dr. Marston's study can be found on our website. The next test result I'll share with you was the testing done on the SARS virus. SARS virus, we had a 99 plus percent inactivation rate. You may remember the SARS virus was big in 2003, both in Canada and China. We sold many thousands of units to the Chinese government, who installed them in all of their subways and public buildings in order to help combat the SARS crisis. 
One of the interesting stories about the SARS crisis I always like to point out was how extensively studied the transmission of the virus was from its initial stages to the pandemic portions. And one of the findings was very interesting. A doctor at a hotel in Beijing who had the virus managed to infect people 160 plus feet away from him staying in the same hotel. That goes back to illustrating the point that a virus is so small it will stay airborne for extended periods of time and ride whatever kind of air movement it is to whatever portions of the building that that air is headed to. So, air coming in one side of a room or a long hallway, pulled through a return on the other, would carry the virus down the entire length of this 160 foot hallway, potentially infecting someone all the way at the other end of it. That's why an active purification process is necessary to really effectively try to purify the air of microbes. You can't just rely on microbes making it to the air handler or through the ductwork in order to be purified. The next result I'd like to share with you was our testing on Norwalk virus. Norwalk virus is more commonly known as the cruise ship virus and accounts for over half of the stomach flus in America. A cruise ship used to put out to port. It would have 1,200 people on board. Somebody would sneeze and hold a railing going up to the dining hall. The next 900 people who walked by and touched that railing would pick up the virus and probably over dinner ingest it, thus becoming sick. This was of course a major PR blow to the cruise ship industry and a very expensive problem to fix for them. They had to, after every Norwalk virus infection, wipe down all of the surfaces on the entire ship with bleach or other kinds of uh, antimicrobial chemicals. This, of course, cost them millions of dollars, one, for the amount of labor that they needed to do all of this work, and two, for having a ship out of commission for a period of time while it was performed. We tested in a laboratory with our PHI and Remy products and found a 99-plus percent reduction of Norwalk viruses both in the air and on surfaces exposed to the air. We've since outfitted many different cruise lines, uh, foremost of which would be Disney Cruises, with their technology, and the ones that have outfitted with the technology no longer experience Norwalk virus outbreaks. Next up, we'll discuss MRSA, an antibiotic-resistant form of staph bacteria. MRSA is a problem anywhere where you've got a lot of potentially exposed skin that comes into contact with a lot of other skin or surfaces that may have the bacteria on it. RGF's PHI and Remy technology were effective at reducing MRSA by 98 plus percent in a 24 hour period. We've installed these units in locker rooms and gymnasiums across the country. We've even put them in hospitals like the Colleton Medical Center in Georgia, which did a four year double blind study, counting MRSA cases in the two years before installation and the two years after. After installing PHI units, the Colleton Medical Center saw a 39 percent decrease in their MRSA cases. One of the more interesting problems we've seen with MRSA comes from AstroTurf, where football is played. As you can imagine, you've got a lot of players with a lot of exposed skin, oftentimes with cuts or scrapes on them, who are coming into contact with this AstroTurf surface. This surface can house MRSA bacteria, leading to many potential infections with players missing time or having serious health concerns. RGF is currently developing a system which will treat the water used to wash the AstroTurf in the sprinkler system with oxidizers that will destroy MRSA bacteria on contact, helping to minimize the potential risk of infection from players on the ground. The next set of results we'll look at are tests on mold spores. We achieved a 97 plus percent inactivation of three different kinds of mold spores, uh, one a yeast, one a mold, and one the stachybotrys, the black mold that has caused so many infections. Mold will always be a major concern for people owning any kind of property. A home is the biggest investment most people will make in their life, and by the time you identify a serious mold problem, it's often too late. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure when talking about mold remediation. Our goal with air purification is to eliminate the airborne mold spores so they don't have a chance to grow into mold colonies. That being said, there are some problems that even the best air purifier won't be able to overcome. If you have serious water leaks or pooling, or if you're getting mold growth behind the walls where the air can't get to, obviously these air purifiers won't be able to take care of those applications. It's always extremely important to make sure that you address any potential mold issues like moisture head on and as soon as you can to ensure that you won't get any growth. And use these kind of air purifiers as a long-term preventative device. 
We've gone over a few of our test results, but RGF has some of the most extensive third-party validation in the industry. And if you contact us or go on our website, www.rgf.com, you should find a full book of test results detailing a large number of microbes and gases that we've effectively tested on.